it's rolling. Thanks. All right, sweet. Hi, I'm Dan Gurren. You can uh, tweet me at dgurren and just about everywhere else on the internet. I'm Dan Gur. I'm a Drupal Camp Asheville organizer. That's Asheville with an A. It's in Western North Carolina, just over the mountains. And you can uh, join us this summer, July 13 through 15. We're doing a science summit this year. And we'd love for you to join us if you like. <coughs> By day, I'm an engineer at Civic Actions. It's a digital agency that focuses on government, open, and agile digital services, all while maintaining balance. Yeah, so. I don't want to have to come in on Saturday, and uh, I don't want to have to come in on Sunday either. So it's not good for our balance. When I began working in Agile, it occurred to me that we weren't so much agreeing upon what to work on as what not to work on. Test-driven development helps us clarify that definition of done with a simple yes or no answer. Throughout our development process, tests will initially fail up until the point where they pass, and then we know that we're done. So we make only what is important without unnecessary bells, whistles, and other stuff. Our tendency is to test less, if at all. While it's difficult sometimes to conceive a test for something that does not yet exist, it's a great exercise, and once you got used to it, you might not be able to develop without it. When we test first, we can achieve greater balance. With all the demands on our time, energy, and focus, it's essential that we maintain this balance as it allows us to deliver consistent quality over time. When we know that our automated tests are passing, we have the confidence that the job is done and we can get on with the rest of the things in our life, or maybe just more programming. We know we're ready to move on when we see green on our screen. So how do we get there? Let's look at a few common tools used to test Drupal websites and applications, visual, behavioral, and unit. Visual is a great way to quickly get wide test coverage. Behavioral works well for site building activities, and unit tests help ensure that our custom code is doing what we think it's doing. Let's say we've got a new site, we have some design comps, or maybe an existing site, and want to establish a baseline for how that site should look. We can use these images as starting points. Visual regression testing makes it easy to implement wide coverage without much thought. When we update core and contrib, we don't want to see any changes. With custom development, we might expect to see changes for some or all pages. Visual regression testing works by taking snapshots before and after changes and comparing them. It can be hard to see these differences with the human eye, but the comparison makes it easy to see even small differences, which can have cascading effects as we progress down the page. So how does it work? Magic? Or science? The intersection over union, or IOU, allows us to set thresholds for how different we want to allow the before and after images to be. The IOU score is a scale that goes from one down to zero, <coughs> with one being equivalent and zero having the least possible amount of intersection. We can target our comparisons to Drupal theme regions and other parts of the page using CSS selectors. Behavior-driven development is a great way 
to test our site building activities and business expectations. The BHAT Drupal extension is the way to go if you want to use BHAT with Drupal. BHAT uses Gherkin syntax, which serves as both documentation and automated tests. Each line in BHAT is a step. And the Drupal extension helps us define functionality by providing out of the box steps that we can use all the time, like logging into Drupal. This extension can itself be extended with contrib and custom modules and themes. Features in user story format give a high level overview of what will be contained in each dot feature file. Scenarios are collections of steps, like user acceptance tests, but can also be automated. There can be multiple scenarios per feature. A keyword begins each line. Keywords include given, when, then, but, and, and. All keywords are technically interchangeable, but for human purposes should be used in a sensible order. When you go to write your first scenario and it doesn't work, try adding the at API on the line preceding the scenario to tag in the Drupal or Drush driver. You can also add the at JavaScript tag to have a scenario run with JavaScript. Groups are a great way to isolate types of functionality and run only those tests. If you're looking to isolate application features, infrastructure, or some other subset of the entire test suite. This can save both time and energy when working on certain areas of a code base. Hooks can be used to run at certain times, like before or after Drupal processes, scenarios, or even BHAT features. Blackbox is the default driver. It's for tests that require no authentication or access, such as with anonymous users. No tag is needed to use the black box driver. The Drupal driver contains the bulk of step definitions we regularly use, like logging in and operating on entities. The Drush driver, in addition to the ability to run Drush commands, of course, has the advantage of being able to run remotely. JavaScript facilitates tests in a browser similar to what we typically use on our mobile and desktop devices. Now, before we get too far, it's good to know a little bit about the BHAT configuration file. It's a YAML file that defines profiles, which define extensions, like our BHAT extension. And here we see a default profile where we define our driver using the API driver key. To use the Drush driver, it's best to set up SSH with keys to avoid needing to type a password. Configure Drush aliases in a profile within the Drupal extension to use them remotely. The step definition is I run Drush followed by the command. To run bhat tests with different profiles, use the P flag to specify which profile you'd like to use. One thing to look out for is that the machine name for node titles is automatically filled in by JavaScript in Drupal 8. If you hit the enter key too fast after typing a node title, You'll see in your browser that JavaScript doesn't have time to create the machine name. When this happens, the browser validation fails and shows the required machine name field is not complete. When bhat runs without JavaScript, however, this fails silently. It took me a while to figure this one out, so hopefully this can save you some time. 
you run into this situation. If you want to discover similar situations, you can use uh, Google Chrome DevTools to toggle JavaScript on and off and simulate in your browser how a Drupal site or app will function during a BHAT test that does not have JavaScript running. And in Google Chrome DevTools, you can just click the contextual menu and then settings. And then check the disable JavaScript checkbox at the bottom of the settings. You might have to scroll down, there's a lot of settings. They're adding them all the time. There are no multi-line comments, just the hash sign to comment out anything following it on a given line. If you have a fancy editor, you'll likely be able to comment out multiple lines by selecting them, and then you can use a <laughs> the keyboard shortcut combination of control or command on Apple computers plus slash. All right, let's say we have a handful of scenarios that all have the same entities. Tables are a great way to create multiple entities in a background. Now these are two different concepts but we'll start with our feature, our feature out with a background, which will be run before every scenario to prepare the content. We'll use pipe delimited tables to add field values. And the first row in each table is gonna be the machine name, and all subsequent rows will create entities with the specified field values. We can also use tables for multiple assertions, like the example here tests for multiple roles names. The Drupal context is included with the BHAT Drupal extension, and the raw context is more the backend glue that allows Drupal context to easily provide these step definitions for core entity types. Mink helps us mostly with the theming layer. And markup works with HTML tags, not to be confused with Drupal or BHAT tags, as well as classes and attributes. Uh, the message context refers to Drupal messages. And the Drush context allows us to use the Drush command line interface. Sometimes we'll need to test something that isn't already defined for us, and we can create our own step definitions in the custom context class, which is in the feature context PHP file. We can get started by writing a step we'd like to see in our BHAT test. When we run the test, it will fail and generate a snippet with an exception that we can copy. We'll replace that exception with some PHP code of our own. If we don't replace the exception, and we just copy and paste it in, PHP will throw that exception when we run the test. It's a good way to see if the, con uh, the custom context is even being run at all. But in normal practice, we'll delete the exception and add our code, which is a combination of PHP, BHAT, Mink, and Drupal programming conventions. We'll then test it again, see if it works. If we need to add a variable into our step definition, like a web form ID, we'll put a colon before the argument variable in the annotation to the function, and then we'll use the variable as the argument to and within the function. In step definitions, we always put variables in quotes to distinguish them from the step definition. 
and quotes can be single or double, depending on your needs. Here's how to make bhat get and visit pages. Use the get session container object from Mink to capture and visit paths within a site. In this example, we get the URL we're on, then append slash edit to visit the edit form for a typical entity. Sometimes we'll create nodes or users and won't know which entity ID they will be assigned. Instead of using path auto, which we may not want, if we need to go to a previously visited URL, we can create save and visit URL functions using this to reference the current object. This allows us to store the URL as a property of the object. So it can later be used in a different function that is called in a subsequent step. This works great if an entity is created and then needs to be visited later, perhaps when logged in as a different user, when path auto isn't installed. Otherwise, it can be difficult or impossible to know which entity ID will be in the path. If your test didn't pass at first, and it probably didn't, here are some things you can do to figure out, figure out why or why not. There are steps that can output the URL or response. Print R can be placed within a context to reveal the actual value of variable, not necessarily what we think the value of that variable is. BHAT can be configured to take screenshots and output source code for pages that fail, which is when we most need to know what's happening. It can be a real time saver to run a feature starting from a certain line in a file. This can be accomplished with a colon followed by the line number where we want to start our test. The background steps will still run. BHAT starts from a defined line. It's possible to add subcontexts in contrib projects. Uh, there's good documentation for this in the uh, BHAT Drupal extension docs uh, for modules and themes if you're uh, contributing. And if you write reusable step definitions, uh, please feel free to share them on GitHub. Uh, alternatively, can create an issue in the Drupal extension project in BHAT or even Mink. And not surprisingly, these projects do require that you write automated tests for their features. So. It makes more sense to use unit tests when custom code is being uh, written, because core and contrib usually already have these tests. So unit tests are typically faster to run and more targeted than behavior-driven tests. Drupal 8 ships with four PHP test suites. Give you a little time to soak this page in. There's a lot on there. So the suites are unit, kernel, functional, and JavaScript. They progressively increase in scope. Starting with the unit test, it's uh, fast and the most granular. You actually don't even need to run Drupal to run unit tests. The kernel suite runs an environment similar to the Drupal install screen. No modules are installed and there's no configuration. Uh, the kernel suite is great for testing APIs and decoupled backends. That's kind of a big thing now. The functional suite is similar to what you would experience in your browser, except uh, without JavaScript on. 
the functional suite is fully booted. You can visit Drupal Pass. It's uh, web-based and uh, actually somewhat similar to the behavioral BHAT testing. Now the JavaScript suite uses PhantomJS to simulate JavaScript in the browser. When you're deciding which suite to use, less is really more here, so don't use JavaScript, boot, or bootstrap if you don't have to. Here's a very simple unit test, what it looks like. We'll extend the unit test case class with a class, a class that must end in test. And any public function name that starts with test will be tested. So the test we see here should pass uh, as long as one equals one. Some of the common assertions include equals, which uh, compare different instances of objects to see if they contain similar values. Same as like comparing with two equals signs, so the objects would need to be the same instance in addition to having the same value to assert true with same. With equals, the objects could be different instances and still assert true. Uh, an exhaustive list of available assertions is available in the PHP unit documentation, which is linked here, and I'll share some uh, updated slides when the presentation is over here. The kernel secret recipe for testing an API or decoupled backend is a uh, kernel test. And since this suite operates in a bootstrapped environment, much like the Drupal install screen, we need to recreate any environmental conditions first that will be necessary to run our test. Before we do anything, we probably need to enable some modules. And this holds true for kernel tests and functional tests as well, uh, both with and without JavaScript. The modules variable is an array of module machine names and it handles installing those modules in the PHP unit test environment. The setup function comes next in the class. It'll run before the test functions, similar to the background that we had in BHAT tests. Uh, setting up the parent inherits all of the configuration from the kernel test base. Once that parent is set up, we can uh, install any additional database schema and configuration necessary for the subsequent testing. Here's what a setup might look like. Uh, we can see the parent setup first and then the database schema and then the configuration. So the install schema allows us to install a select list of specific database tables for a module, whereas the install entity schema installs all of the database tables for a module and, uh, and takes an entity type ID. Install config installs uh, the configuration management YAML files uh, for an array of modules. We might need additional configuration beyond what is in the module files. Maybe we need to install some fields. It's a typical scenario. So to do this, we'll get and parse the YAML from configuration, then create and save the config. We need to install the storage first, so we have somewhere to put the field. And note that for the field config, uh, we need to reference the bundle in configuration management to get that specific instance of the field. Field installation is a great opportunity for a reusable trait. We'll talk about it a little bit later. 
often we need to go beyond uh, just APIs and decoupled backends. We need an end-to-end -end test for a website with actual pages. For this, we can use the functional test suite. And while it is usually slower than the kernel suite, we usually don't need to do as much config and uh, we can visit paths. For uh, functional browser tests, we'll typically use methods within the web assert object class. And that's a link to the documentation there if you want to check out the slides afterward. Yeah. I'm not going to click it now. <laughs> a couple of those methods uh, are status code equals and link exists. Here's an example of a little functional test that extends the browser test base class. Basically says we're going to visit the home page since the path is empty. And the HTTP status code equals 200, also known as OK. We also see that the link to the blog exists. And note that we're looking at the human readable label for the menu, not the machine name, since the functional test is looking at the browser. Sometimes we need to test JavaScript or just have that function functionality there to support what we're testing. We don't want to have that situation like uh, when we only entered the entity label and JavaScript didn't auto-complete that machine name for us. An extension of the browser test base, the JavaScript suite uses Phantom JS driver to simulate a functional environment with JavaScript. And here are some typically used functions. Execute script returns a value, which is usually jQuery. Evaluate scripts does not return a value. Key down is when a key is pressed on the keyboard. When we need to test conditions with a specific browser width, we can use the resize window method. Now, if a picture is worth a thousand words, then uh, create screenshot method is worth a lot of words. Give it a file name and it will save a JPEG for us so we can see what's happening from the test perspective. In JavaScript test base, get Drupal settings still parses the configuration values into an array, just like in functional tests. But here it is after JavaScript changes to those settings have been made. The JavaScript test base also includes some special assertions. Some common ones are assert JS condition, which will wait for 10 seconds for the JS condition to be come true. So you might not get the results you expect if your script takes longer than 10 seconds to complete. But that's kind of too long, so you should make it complete faster. Um, there are a lot of assert element visible and not visible, uh, even though those are deprecated. So uh, those will be moving to mink as node element is visible and not visible. That could be a good uh, opportunity for contribution. Maybe if you go to some sprints on Friday and you need something easy to tackle, um, just kind of changing some of that deprecation stuff can be a good way to break into doing con uh, contrib work and there'll be mentors around to help out with that. Assert session can be used to do more with JavaScript. It can wait for events such as Ajax, a button, an element to be visible, a field or autocomplete. JavaScript can also assert that a response contains a value or the visibility of an element 
on a page. I like this picture. When we need to test something that isn't really there, we don't necessarily need to recreate the whole thing. We can create a stub to return a simple value. For an object test double, we can use a mock. This will, of course, have expectations about how it is called. We can use get mock builder to specify a class such as the web form entity in this example. We'll disable the original constructor first so that the full object is not created. We then will specify only those methods that we need and then get the mock. The matcher in this example is once. The matcher can also be any, zero, or more times. It can also be at least once or a specific number of times. This example will return a mock object with a web form ID of a test web form. To better organize our tests, we can create base classes and extend them so we don't duplicate code in many classes. Base classes are fantastic for common setup items, such as enabling modules, installing database schemas, configurations, and fields. Mocks can be placed in base classes as well. And there's some outstanding examples of base classes in the JSON API contrib module, if you wanna check that out. Traits aren't really specific to unit testing, it's just object-oriented PHP. And they can be used in situations like we had with uh, the installing of fields, for example, that we saw earlier. We might want to install many fields in our tests and just passing the field name to a trait in any of our classes significantly simplifies that process. Another trait is a reflection trait, and this allows us to test otherwise untestable protected and private methods. This is done by invoking a method and passing an object, a method name, and an array of parameters. We set the method to accessible, then return the result of that method when the object and parameters are passed to it. Here's an example where we invoke method with an object, method name, and the parameters. Data providers. These allow us to run a single test with multiple sets of data. In this example, the first data set would pass as one plus two equals three. The second would also pass because four plus five equals nine. The third and final set, however, would fail because seven plus eight is not equal to nine. We can use associative arrays as data providers and this will make uh, failure messages be included. Uh, the, the array key will be included in the failure message. So in this case, the failure message will indicate that the third and final data set failed. False is the key to that array that tests if seven plus eight equals nine, which of course it does not. So debugging in PHP unit, uh, print R is your friend, except when there's nothing in the variable and it just doesn't print anything when it's empty. So sometimes 
uh, I might suggest print Ring a string in front of the variable to show something, just so you can see where it is or isn't. Um, or if you have multiple printers, then you can see which one is which. When you get to a certain number, it starts to get kind of confusing. Um, you can also do screenshots and uh, HTML output. Uh, and rep those reports can be uh, configured in your PHP unit XML file. The messages will give you a line number and often great clues as to what went wrong in your test. All right, so we've got our tests all written and we want to run them. There's a PHP unit executable with a lot of options and arguments. Uh, if you use Acquia build and launch tool, uh, that has a, a command as well. Continuous integration can uh, ideally be configured to run your PHP unit tests. And uh, when we're testing on a local, we can use the at group annotation to only test what we're working on currently. It's one way to do that. Note that if you do choose to use the uh, print R function for debugging purposes, that uh, it will report as an error. So if you're just seeing that one error when you take out your debugging, you'll actually be fine. Uh, other results other than uh, pass, error, and fail are uh, risky, skipped, and incomplete, but those are less common. You'll usually see pass, error, or fail, which would be the dot, the E, or the F. So our tendency is only to test success, but we should also test for failure where appropriate. And so we should envision not only what should happen, but also what should not happen and test for those scenarios. So when we expect a failure in PHP, we, ex we expect an exception. And the expect exception method will have parentheses after it. And uh, the annotation will have an at symbol in front of it. We can expect code, a message, or a regular expression to match a message with a pattern. All right, so now that we have our test suite and we're feeling balanced, we can open it up for uh, discussion. Just please step up to the microphone if you'd like to participate. Hi, <clears throat> thanks. And uh, sorry to take you all the way back to the beginning of the presentation. Oh, okay. But can you talk a little bit about how to get started with visual regression testing now that uh, WebDriver CSS is no longer supported? Um, I mean, there are some other tools out there. Uh, I mean, WebDriver CSS isn't supported, but you can still use it. Um, you know, that's, uh, you know, there are, there are some other options out there. Um, you know, we prefer to use open source when possible. So, you know, we tend to shy away from, uh, those commercial products, but, um, they certainly are out there. I'm not really sure, uh, you know, if, if anyone knows of, of some of the other follow-up, if there's like a, some other open source options that are out there other than WebDriver CSS. But you're still using WebDriver CSS? I mean, does that um, mean you, like, uh, my understanding of this is based on Googling it from my seat after you moved on. Right. But it sounded like WebDriver IO has like progressed and, yeah. and the most, and the, the WebDriver CSS isn't compatible with those versions, so do you have to just use an older version of WebDriver I.O. underneath? Yeah, I mean, the version that we have is on a slightly ancient site, you know, from like a year or two ago, so uh, I think it was like 2016 was, was kind of the heyday of, of WebDriver CSS. Um, but yeah, if, if people have uh, other recommendations or, uh, you know, you can step up to the mic or feel free to comment on the, on the node in the, uh, 
for the session on the DrupalCon site? I would like to know also. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Hi, thanks for the talk. Hey, hey. Um, so if you are building a distribution, how would you group behead tests? Mm -hmm. Like how would you organize them? Would you put them all in a single uh, module or do you have a behead test in each of the module in distribution? Pretty good question there. Um, I mean, there are a number of ways to, to organize it. So typically, as far as just the files themselves, um, the way I've seen it done is it'll be, there'll be a, like a separate file for bhat and within there will be um, a features directory right. and you put all of your features in there and then you can name different features for your different features. So, you know, you, you, could, you could break this out by, um, uh, sometimes we've done it like by role. Okay. So, um, you know, like administrator or, you know, editor would have a feature. Um, you know, it could be broken out by content type. There's, you know, lots of ways you can slice it. Right. Um, you can have like a general just for like, you know, system-wide config, stuff like that. I don't, do, you have, do you have a way that you like to split it up or? Um, not really. We're still trying to figure out where we should put it, though. Like, um, do we put it in a single place or do we want to put it in multiple places? Depends on the functionality or features. Oh, right. I see what you're saying. Like, to, like if you wanted to break them out into the modules. Right. Okay. And, you, and it's a distribution? Right. So you, hmm. That's a tough question. Um, <laughs> I would say... You know, if there are separate modules and you were able to to separate the functionality of those modules, that would be better because you would possibly use those modules not in the distribution, right? Correct. So, I mean, that would be like the best way to do it, if I might be so bold as to suggest that. Okay. Right. Thanks. Um, one more <laughs> question now. Uh, how do you normally? group your tests, like what are your recommendations? Do you use in tag or do you use in suite? Um, I think I've seen tag used more. Okay. Yeah, um, just because, you know, the suite is gonna be more uh, just kind of on what level you are, if you're on like unit or kernel, right? Okay. And then, um, yeah, I think we, we tend to use the um, the tags more so. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Sorry, one last question. So <laughs> when you showed the screenshot of the one test suite and eight tests passed, what was defining that, what was containing the suite? What defined the suite of, of eight tests that were in one suite, S-U-I-T? Oh, I think um, I think that might have actually been a JavaScript screenshot that I had taken. Okay. <laughs> so I didn't actually have that in the talk, but um, you know, most of the most of the tests when they pass, they'll have like you know some sort of so green color. So they could have been just like a behat suite of okay, but right, yeah. But is there yeah. anything that would encapsulate visual behat functional testing in one suite, or is that something like Travis would just return past? Yeah, we're doing something like that with. Do you want to step up to the mic? Yeah. Oh. Just for the recording. Sure. Um, we get some snapshots in Circle. Um, so we're actually using Nightwatch. There's a patch that Sally and Daniel wrote for um, 8.5, and it's going to go into 8.6. And Circle will actually give you artifacts that you can look at. If a test fails, you can see what, what broke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes a screenshot for you. It's just doc, yeah, Nightwatch is gonna go into core. It's faster than Behat, um, but yeah, there's a patch for it. And if you integrate with Circle, you can usually have one of those CI tools take screenshots for you. Yeah, it's worth a look. I was wondering if that would actually be a reasonable replacement given the last answer, and it may be. 
Night, Night Watch is the testing framework, Nightwatch.js, um, and you can find uh, stuff in the core issue queue around it too. But Circle and Travis may do the same thing. Yeah. I actually presented today on the basics of Nightwatch as well. Okay. And my, qu my question is today, uh, did you find that the test of uh, set of tools that comes with Drupal is actually uh, pretty uh, redundant in terms of writing tests takes long, long time. And if, uh, I, I'm talking about like more than 30% and when we're talking actually selling the test driven development to a client, never works. So uh, the actual question is, did you find any other tools that are actually more faster or more you know, straightforward? Like for example, Nightwatch, I found I can, I can get a front end developers to put them on writing tests for it. Whereas I can't put front end developer to write and test for a mink or be hat. <laughs> right, yeah. I, I mean, it's definitely the, like the fastest, easiest way to get the most coverage is, is to go visual, right? And, and so it sounds like Nightwatch is the way to do that now. So, um, yeah. Okay, so, okay, so we're still working on that. Um, yeah, I mean, to ask a front-end developer to, uh, I mean, to do PHP tests is probably absurd, but I mean, I... I, I, I just, just even in regards to end-to-end -end testing, so if we'll just take, for example, end-to-end, -end, so right. something that follows the user path, and not talking about unit tests, but mm -hmm. some end-to-end, -end. Do, do, can you recommend any other tools outside of Drupal box that you found along the way? Um, I mean, these are pretty much the tools that, that we've been using. Um, you know, I, I think there is some redundancy with uh, like BHAT tests and then the functional PHP tests, right? So it's well, like... With Nightwatch too. Like yeah. You could do BHAT, but the, the point of Nightwatch and Core is front end developers don't want to write tests in PHP. Like they want to write Yeah, so I mean, I think it's, I mean, it just kind of gives you some options, right? So if you, if you want to do, you know, the, the super fast uh, visual regression, you can do that. Or, or maybe even just the type, like it's, because it's a little bit of a different test there, right? Um, but yeah, and then I guess it's kind of like, just pick your preference if you'd rather write in PHP unit or Gherkin, you know, Maybe maybe you'd prefer Gherkin, to, so you would also have the user acceptance criteria. Um, you know, I'm sure a project manager would hate to read a PHP unit test. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, thank you. All right, anything else? Okay, okay. Thanks. Um, I mean, we use all the t testing environments, but, uh, really, really but I mean, all the different hosting environments out there um, will do, um, I mean, sometimes we'll have Circle CI running it. Um, yeah, I mean, we have some sites on Pantheon, some on Acquia. Yeah. Um, I think that's on Pantheon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey. Yes. Yeah. Uh, conglomerated mess at this point in the situation. <laughs> right. But uh, I got there before, like, so I was only put in place. So, so at this point, I'm yeah, getting the idea just stuff about trying to move it over to something have like having a testing framework or, or like continually integrating and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. But right. what, what do you think like is the best approach? Because a lot of it, I mean, it, it's a daunting task to create all these tests for things that are already working. Gotcha. But at the right. same time, it's probably yeah, a necessity, so right? So yeah, so what I it would recommend in that situation is 
starting with the things that you're working on. So whatever yeah, you well, like, what, what I'm doing you work in, in agile. I'm, I'm using that or, or, so like you pick up a ticket just and just start with like that, I'm, right? I'm using so like, like board, so it doesn't yeah, I mean, because like what, anything, uh, yeah, anything that you need to work on, you'll work on, right? I mean, so like even if something breaks, like then you'll have a test for that, right? So. Yeah, because I mean, you can't go back so, and do everything, right? Okay. right. And you never, right. you never get everything. Right? Yeah. I mean, that would be, probably be overkill. Right. Yeah. I mean, that would be Right. I mean, unless it's like, you know, if you have like a very critical type of an application, then you then you might want to have like everything. Right. I mean, so. But even then, there are probably yeah, only certain so parts of it that are, yeah. right. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. No, it's attached to Drupal core. So it's basically taking what is there for H6. There. Hi. Yeah. And it's driving you nuts. Well, I am getting different results in Chrome. I am using generic. Well, let me start over. My tests are working fine, but what I'm trying to use is uh -huh. this built in that I see on the page. It's seeing things in Chrome and it's not finding them. 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 It's So it's just like completely failing. Yeah. And like some things are passing. Okay, cool. And a lot of things aren't. And I was just wondering if you've like heard of that. <laughs> like, am I the only person this has ever happened to? Is there, there's like, a, is it possible? I think there's a Slack channel for testing too. So if you want to share that. There is. I mean, you can. It's, I mean, it could be built for me. As cheap as me. Or Nightwatch. Yeah. Oh, wow. Just things that like manual and or it, it sounds to me like it was working great. There's going to be like some CSS or JavaScript that is like started a new repo for us. Um, compliant with Firefox and and not Chrome. Yeah, I'm just setting it up now, right. so maybe it's, it's working in Chrome, <laughs> oh, not Firefox. Right. Okay. And not one okay. So sorry. So it's compliant with Chrome, but not with Firefox. So like you know how there would be like the moves, whatever, or like sometimes it would be like. Okay, but I mean, if I'm looking for, I can see there and it's fast and I can find that. No, and I'm looking in the source and I can see anchor tags. Right. right. Did you take a screenshot of the failure? I would. You could. You could take a screenshot of the failure. You could take a, the HTML source code of the failure. Oh, okay. You okay. could. Yeah, yeah. Well, the main thing comes from testing tools. Well, yeah. they already recommend and have integrated. I mean, they're they're doing all kinds of things. Okay, yeah. I can I need my card and check off. I mean I I might have the answer. That's pretty cool. Just thought of it. Nice. <laughs> Is that Mike? Yeah? No? No. No, okay, sorry. Oh, sorry. You look like someone else.
So getting into automation soon, do you think going to head is an optimized route to do a step on someone who's just using a computer to type launch? We're on eight through nine now with the and um, after I get our refactor built in and then we'll be launching five. So um, do you think it makes sense to go over a step launch? Or? I mean I walking around it looks like there are a couple companies that are offering some pretty cool tools um, like Lullabot has uh, Tugboat and ZivTech has Provo Is it just that doing well they um, I mean they are uh, digital agencies and and they use those tools themselves so the, and they've open sourced them. Right. So um, I think Tugboat's a little bit faster and, and it's newer. Um, but. So is that a product that they're open sourcing? Yeah. Very insightful. Probably end up going 